Hi you four, welcome back to the second half of the spring term and this half term we're going to be reading a fantastic book, you're going to love it, it's called The Wild Robot by Peter Brown and our TLP for today is Can I be a story detective? What questions do I have? What are my predictions? So we're going to start to think about what this story could be about. Story detective, mission one. So all we know so far about this book is that it's called The Wild Robot and we can look at the illustration on the front cover. So have a think about these two questions and maybe write some ideas down in your book and we'll talk about it at Zoom later. What would you like to know about the book and what do you think the book will be about? So what are your questions about the story and what do you think might happen? Story Detective Mission 2. So before we start to read the story, here are some titles of the chapters in the book. And I want you to have a think about what order could they come in in the book to tell the story. So we're going to start to think about the story as a story mountain. There are five parts to most stories. The opening, the build up, the problem, the resolution and the ending. Let's have a look at that now in a bit more detail. OK, so you need to get yourself a piece of plain paper and have a go at drawing something that looks a little bit like this. Don't worry if it doesn't look exactly the same, but definitely draw yourself a mountain and you need five boxes or five circles to write in. So the opening of a story is where we set the scene and we meet our characters. The build up tells us more about these characters and builds up to something happening in the story. The problem. This is the top of the mountain. This is when something goes wrong. Something that our characters have to overcome and face. Now we start going down the side of our mountain where we have our resolution. So the problems get sorted out. They find solutions. The characters overcome the issues. And then finally down at the bottom of our mountain is our ending. When the story ends and it could be a happy ending. It could be a sad ending. It could be an ending that is going to continue. So imagine that you're going for a walk up the left hand side of the mountain and down the other side to the end. That's your story mountain. OK, hopefully you've drawn yourself out the mountain. And now I want you to have a go at plotting two of these chapter titles in each of your five boxes. They're all mixed up at the moment. So you need to work out which two you think are about the beginning of the story. Which two show build up in the story? Which two show a problem that our characters might have to overcome? Which two show a resolution for this problem? And which two give us our ending? So have a go at writing two of the chapter titles in each of your five boxes. Bring it to Zoom later and we'll talk about it then. At the end of this video, I will show you how I organise the titles, but you can do it in any way that makes sense to you. There's no right or wrong on answer to this. Story Detective, Mission 3. The Wild Robot by Peter Brown. Chapter 1, The Ocean. Our story begins on the ocean with wind and rain and thunder and lightning and waves. A hurricane roared and raged through the night, and in the middle of the chaos, a cargo ship was sinking down, down, down to the ocean floor. The ship left hundreds of crates floating on the surface, but as the hurricane thrashed and swirled and knocked them around, the crates also began sinking into the depths. One after another, they were swallowed up by the waves, until only five crates remained. By morning, the hurricane was gone. There was no clouds, no ships, no land in sight. There was only calm, water and clear skies, and those five crates lazily bobbing along an ocean current. Days passed and then a smudge of green appeared on the horizon. As the crates drifted closer, the soft green shape slowly sharpened into the hard, 
edges of a wild, rocky island. The first crate rode to shore on a tumbling, rumbling wave and then crashed against the rocks with such force that the whole thing burst apart. Now, reader, what I haven't mentioned is that tightly packed inside each crate was a brand new robot. The cargo ship had been transporting hundreds of them before it was swept up in the storm. Now only five robots were left. Actually, only four were left. Because when that first crate crashed against the rocks, the robot inside shattered to pieces. The same thing happened to the next crate. It crashed against the rocks and robot parts flew everywhere. Then it happened to the next crate and the next. Robot limbs and torsos were flung onto ledges. A robot head splashed into a tide pool. A robot foot skittered into the waves. And then came the last crate. There it is. It followed the same path as the others but instead of crashing against the rocks, it sloshed against the remains of the first four crates. Soon more waves were heaving it up out of the water. It soared through the air, spinning and glistening until it slammed down onto a tall shelf of rock. The crate was cracked and crumpled, but the robot inside was safe. Story Detective Mission 4 Chapter 2 The Otters The island's northern shore had become something of a robot gravesite. Scattered across the rocks were the broken bodies of four dead robots. They sparkled in the early morning light and their sparkles caught the attention of some very curious creatures. A gang of sea otters was romping through the shallows when one of them noticed the sparkling objects. The otters all froze. There they are. The noses in the air. Very curious creatures. They raised their noses to the wind, but they smelled only the sea. So they cautiously crept over the rocks to take a closer look. The gang slowly approached a robot torso. The biggest otter stuck out his paw, swatted the heavy thing and quickly jumped back. But nothing happened. So they wriggled over to a robot hand. Another brave otter stuck out her paw and flipped the hand over. It made a lovely clinking sound on the rocks and the otters squeaked with delight. They spread out and played with robot arms and legs and feet. More hands were flipped. One of the otters discovered a robot head in a tide pool and they all dove in and took turns rolling it along the bottom. And then they spotted something else. Overlooking the gravesite was the one surviving crate. Its insides were scraped and dented and a wide gash ran across its top. The otters scampered up the rocks and climbed onto the big box. Ten furry faces poked through the gash, eager to see what was inside. What they saw was another brand new robot. But this robot was different. It was still in one piece and it was surrounded by spongy packing foam. The otters reached through the gash and tore at the foam. It was so soft and squishy. They squeaked as they snatched at the fluffy stuff. Shreds of it floated away on the sea breeze and in all the excitement, one of their paws accidentally slapped an important little button on the back 
of the robot's head. Click! It took a while for the otters to realise that something was happening inside the crate. But a moment later, they heard it. A low, whirring sound. Everyone stopped and stared. And then the robot opened 